Hey, this is OXDF. Advent of Code is such a fun challenge, and it's something I look forward to every December. Uh, if, you come, if you've come across my solution videos here amongst the sea of other solutions out there, um, welcome. If you are a regular subscriber to my channel for hacking videos and other sorts of information security content, um, obviously you can feel free to skip over the Advent of Code stuff um, like you can any year. Um, but I would encourage you, play along with me. Um, come, let's learn some Python and uh, do this together. Um, understanding programming will go a long way in your information security career. Um, and what better time to give it a try than when there's a fun challenge going on. So in this video, I'm going to do a quick introduction to my setup for the advent of code so I can reference back to it from other videos and don't have to go into it every time. Um, and uh, then we can jump in and start solving some challenges. So let's take a quick look. Um, the first thing I have here in this advent of code 2024 folder is my Gende uh, SH script. Um, this is probably some pretty janky bash script code here, but um, basically it just is getting me set up each day for what I'm going to do. So if I run, uh, if I actually run it with source, and I can talk about why in a second, but um, I run source gen sh and then number, um, it pads, it will make me, so if I run that source gen sh one, it'll make me a day zero one folder. It'll go into that folder. Um, it's set up to do Rust and Python, but I'm going to be doing Python this year. So it'll make me that directory. It'll go into that directory. It will you go out and get me my my personalized input.txt and save it there for the day. Um, and then it will create me a stub file that just uh, opens up sys argv1, so whatever the first argument is, it reads in lines, it's ready to print part one and part two. Um, it doesn't do anything to begin with. Um, I actually will, so I'll run this source gen day. And the reason it runs with source is because when you run the source, you actually stay in the same terminal session and it allows me to do things like change into a directory and still stay in that directory. Um, silly, I, I'm saving myself a CD, but sure. Um, so that's what gende.sh is. Um, the second thing I just wanted to cover in this video is um, I am running as a, this is a, this is a git repo. Uh, oops, if I can type. Um, so this, this is a git repo. Um, I have Let's see, you can see here is my on GitLab, um, AOC 2023, all my solutions from last year. Uh, if we go to this year, I've got a repo set up here and uh, we'll be adding to this over the next uh, 25 days, 24 days, 25 days. Um, I do have a git ignore file already here just because if I have to create any virtual environments, obviously I don't want those saved into the repo. Um, and uh, otherwise this is basically empty right now um, I, other than the VS code folder, which is the last thing we will talk about. Um, I've got this set up uh, just like last year, where I have two pro two uh, I guess profiles set up to run, and these are just basically going to run the current file plus with an argument the current directory ex.txt and the current directory input.txt, and basically this just allows me to because I always have my stuff in the same folder with the same uh, two file names. I can just quickly switch between these and debug whichever I need to debug. Um, I've got a video talking about this in a little bit more depth and I'll include a link to that as well. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Let's, uh, I meant to get this video out yesterday at least and uh, uh, December came fast this year. So um, I'm gonna go jump in and do day one now. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you over there.